This is John Steele reporting on Adventure. Maybe you call it Kalimantan. Maybe just plain Borneo. But to me, it spells just one name, Rajrani. She was beautiful, the kind of beauty that makes you think of the misty moonlight of the tropics. I call this transcribed yarn Vampire. Punta Mero was just a fishing village on the south coast of Borneo until a guy named Muhammad Ali opened up a place there. After that, purity and innocence died natural deaths, but you could buy provisions at Muhammad Ali's. You could buy anything from American soft drinks to Chinese narcotics. In Punta Mero, if you want to go anywhere at all, you have to go to Muhammad Ali's, unless you go swimming with sharks and octopus in the bay. Or you want to take a stroll through the jungle and be eaten alive by assorted spiders and ants. Me? I wanted a cold drink in human company. So, I went to Muhammad Ali's. I picked up a beer and carried it to the only vacant chair in the place and found myself looking at a human mountain seated across the table from me. I figured the guy for a trader of some kind, of uh, indifferent nationality. A pleasure, my friend, to offer you a cigarette. Thanks. Permit me to extend the light? Thanks again. American, of course. Basically. I was once in your country, San Francisco. Delightful city. It was the last time I saw it. Are you familiar with Borneo? Mm, not too well. But this is not your first time here. No, no, no. No, you seem at home. My name is Vraken, Jan Vraken. I'm John Steele. What do you think of this place? Mm, it'll do for what it is. Well, I find it revolting, Mr. Steele. I seldom come down here. I have a charming little bungalow just up the river. Oh? English colonial. Wide sweeping veranda all the way around it, surrounded by beautifully kept lawns and rose gardens. An oasis of refinement in a barbaric country. Well, I'd like to see it before I leave here. Well, do me the great honor of being my guest, then tonight we, we can enjoy supper with champagne. <laughs> well, why not? <laughs> and shall we leave this dreadful place? Those girls make me sick. <laughs> Jan Vraken owned a jeep that had seen its best days, but it was just right for the short journey along a jungle path that ran along the banks of the river. If only you were uh, staying a little longer, Mr. Steele. Why? I would arrange to entertain you. A tiger hunt. Do you enjoy hunting? On occasion. Well, my favorite sport is wild boar. At least twice a year. Anything wrong? There she is, Mr. Steele. Who is she? Standing there among the trees, staring at us. Pretend you do not see her. Well, who is she? Rajrani. That's her name? Yes. She's gorgeous. She's wicked. Well, is she taboo? It is no laughing matter, <laughs> Mr. Steele. <laughs> she thinks it is. You're really scared of yes. us. Yes, I am terrified. I don't get it. Do not misunderstand. I, I was happy to meet you. Even under normal conditions, I would have invited you to my home, but... But what? I... I was deathly afraid to come this way alone. All right, why? I wanted company. Because of that girl? Girl! Yeah? She is not human. Oh, no? You laugh, Mr. Steele. <laughs> she looked very human to me. She, she is a vampire. Say that again? Don't make fun of it, Mr. Steele. Didn't you say she was a... Vampire, yes! Oh, I see. No, I'm not mad, Mr. Steele. Everyone in this neighborhood knows what she is. Mm -hmm. That's so? She's a vampire of the, of the most deadly sort. Well, there were a few at Muhammad Ali's, only they didn't look as clean. Mr. Steele, Rajrani has already killed two men this year. You're really serious about this. I fear I am her next victim. Next victim? She watches for me. I, I see her sometimes at night time, watching my house. <laughs> Just listen to her. <laughs> Jan Vraken was no madman. He was simply a badly scared man. We drove on. His bungalow was a big one. All he had said it was, and miles from anywhere. Modern furniture mixed with some fine rattan pieces and set off by delicate oriental decorations. I have no servants, Mr. Steele. Oh, you're doing fine. Can I help? No, oh. just be comfortable. You do your own housework. Of late, I am forced to. I cannot find servants. Too far out from town? They'll not work for me. No? If it were not for the filth of the town, I would live there, but I cannot tolerate filth. <laughs> not after this place. And so I remain here. 
in my terror. Oh, come on. Yet you know, Mr. Steele, I can understand something. For instance? I told you Rajrani has killed two men this year. In each case, they themselves went to her. She did not come to them. Look, oh, but it's it... true, Mr. Steele. And I can understand. Better finish your drink. They had to go to her. They were fascinated by her. <laughs> that I can believe. They resisted for a time, then succumbed. But I will not, Mr. Steele. Oh, yes, I, I confess she fascinates me. She's very seldom out of my mind. She's quite a gal, chum. Let's face it. She's very, very alluring. There's no better word. Alluring. The English language is rich, but it contains no better word for her. Who were these uh, two fellows she killed? Two natives. Ah, two natives whose heads were full of voodoo nonsense. Do you know how a vampire kills? I know how the vampire bat kills. Punctures a tiny hole in the skin. And feeds on the blood of its victim. Mm -hmm, yeah. And in that manner, the two natives died, Mr. Steele. Their throats punctured. <gasps> Please, look through the window. What? Look through the window. There she is. She's out there. She stood there, near one of the rose bushes, the moonlight shimmering around her. It was queer, but I felt a sort of cold shiver. Suddenly there was something about that girl's beauty. It gave me the creeps. When a guy has vampires on his mind, that's one thing. But when the vampire is a beautiful jungle gal, that's something else. This particular vampire was the original sarong girl. Okay, so Barneo is a strange country with strange peoples living in it. So maybe this is the kind of experience that had to come from there. It happened along the Famine River. The scene was a gorgeous one. The moon looking like it was hanging on the top branches of a tall palm tree. The jungle. Just beyond the cultivated grounds of the gleaming white bungalow of a retired trader named Jan Vrakken. I was Vrakken's guest for the night, and we'd both seen Rajrani staring at the bungalow. I'm no judge of human vampires, but if Rajrani was one... There was a lot to be said for her species. Out there somewhere, among the bushes or the trees, out there waiting. Waiting? For what? For one of us. For me to go out there? Why don't you take the chance? Are you joking, Mr. Steed? <laughs> Where'd she come from? A village a hundred miles up river. Oh? She was driven away from her village. Yeah? Now here, break this. Thank you. And she came down here. Mr. Steele... She destroyed three men in her own village. Oh, three of them, huh? Of course, you don't believe any of this. What do you know about her? Who is she? Her grandfather was English. But she's native. Oh, yes. I don't see any sign of her now. No. Does she speak any English? English or Dutch, they all do. Yeah? English, most likely. Have you ever spoken to her? No. Has anyone around here, I mean? I don't know. Well, where does she live? Who knows? Somewhere close to where we first saw her tonight. But where? Among the trees? In a cave, perhaps. What does she live on? Did you ask? We waited for Rajarani to show herself again, but she didn't. I had every intention of going out to her. Maybe because I had to convince myself she was as normal as I was. But the night passed without further incident. And next morning, Jan Vrakken drove me back to town. Isn't this the place where we saw her last night? Yes. Will you stop? Stop? Yeah. <laughs> By all means. You see, during the day, she is harmless. I can be brave. Brave enough to take a walk over there? A walk? Yeah, we may see her. Will I? Or you can wait here. No, no, no. I do not care to be left alone here. Well, let's take a look around, huh? Very well. There are several small caves just beyond these trees. We can look into a few of them. <laughs> She's across there. Smiling at us. Come on. No. And stay here. Yes. Be careful, Mr. Steele. Be careful. Hello? Hello, Rajrani. 
They tell me that's your name. Yes. And you do speak English. Oh, yes. A lot of rocks around here. May I sit down? <laughs> <laughs> you have a sense of humor, eh? You're a funny man. You talk like you think I'm child, I'm woman. I'll buy that. Buy it? Figure of speech. Forget it. Who are you? I'm not on your mailing list. You wouldn't know me. My name is Steele. John Steele. John. It was my grandfather's name. Oh, that's so? Did he teach you English? Son. Why do you frighten my friend back there? I make fun. I laugh when he's frightened. He says everyone is frightened of you. I know they're frightened. You are not frightened. No. Do you uh, want me to be? No. You want food? What do you have? Fruit, many nuts. Not now. That all you eat? It is all I can get. I cannot hunt. I cannot kill animals. Well, wouldn't you like to live in a house? Oh, no. Look, would you like me to bring you some food? Yes. Some cooked meat, bread, things of that sort. Would you like that? Cooked meat? Mm -hmm. Yes. You bring that to me. I'll bring it to this place after sundown. Will you be here? Oh, yes, I will be here. You bring to me. I'll bring you a mess of food, sure. And some milk. You like milk? Yes. You bring, please. See you tonight, then. Goodbye, now. I wait for you. Yeah. That'll be fine. <laughs> So you will meet her tonight. After sundown. And you will take her food. Yeah. I resent this, Mr. Steele. You what? I resent it very strongly. You shouldn't drink so much in the morning, fella. What can she mean to you? Oh, so that's it. But you will do well not to go to her. You're all mixed up, chum. No, no. No, Mr. Steele, I am not mixed up. I am, and I, I confess this freely, fascinated by that girl. And I resent your, your audacity, your reckless courage. Look, you take her the food. Go on my place. You know I won't. You can. Thank you, no. Well, suit yourself. Why did you tell her that you'd go there tonight? Why not during the day? Well, you say she's harmless during the day. So you deliberately. What, what was it like being so close to her? You, you took her hand once. What, what did it feel like? I felt my heart pounding, Mr. Steele. I, I wanted to rush over there just, just to be as close to her. After a while, I left Riken. I bought a lot of food, had it packed up, then went upstairs to my room. Later in the day, I went down again to eat a meal. Riken was still there, soaking up liquor. I stayed away from him. About five that afternoon, I was back in my room doing some writing. I didn't hear you knock, chum. I did not knock, Mr. Steele. Be careful with that gun. I am drunk, Mr. Steele. Capable of anything. You look at me and you see the flabby hulk of a man that you despise. <laughs> but you are wrong in one respect, Mr. Steele. I am possessed of considerable courage at this point. I am drunk with it, shall we say. Yeah, let's say that. The package on your bed. Is that food for us, honey? Yeah. I will pay for it. I will take it with me. Oh? I am taking your place, Mr. Steele. Not in that condition. In this condition, as one gentleman to another, I am going in this condition. You better sleep for an hour. I can't get that girl out of my mind, Mr. Steele. No matter if she must destroy me, I must go to her. You see? I am drunk, and I am not afraid. Find that gun. You must not follow me, Mr. Steele. Oh. Okay, okay. But you will, hmm? I can read it in your mind. You will try to take her away from me. I... I can't let you interfere with me, Steven. <coughs> you... You would have followed me, Steven. <laughs> Jan Bracken was drunk when he fired at me. He couldn't miss. I was standing only four feet away. But his hand wavered. I felt a red-hot pain. The bullet clipped the side of my neck, just barely touched it. And I went on living. 
My reflexes are good. I didn't even think. I just dropped to the floor and stayed there. Sure, I was dazed, but I had sense enough not to be overly heroic. A second bullet might have finished me off. Riken was satisfied. He picked up the food package I'd bought for Rajrani and ran out of my room. Where is she? She must be around here somewhere. Rajrani! Answer me! It's Jan Varken! I'll come to you! You hear me? I am here, you hear me? Rajrani! You hear me? Ah! Ah! That was her. Where are you? Don't you hide from me. I know you're here. I, I have some food for you, right? Food! I bought you a lot of nice food, you hear me? Please don't make me wait. Must you torture me? Where are you? Where are you? Oh, why doesn't she show herself? What is the matter with her? Oh. oh, you're so beautiful. Please, please do not go away. I want to touch you. You are so beautiful. I do not care what you are. Look, here's the food I brought you in this package. Take it. You still there, Rajrani? I do not see you. <laughs> oh, I am so sleepy. I am so sleepy. I must sleep for a little while. Just a little while. <laughs> Oh, yes, a man could die for the kiss of a girl like you. Oh, no. Not, not my throat. Not my throat. Not my throat! Marcus! <laughs> Marcus! I'm coming! Don't be a fool. Steel, there's, there's blood. There's blood on my throat. What? I fell asleep, Steel. She came to me, the vampire. She came to me as I slept. I, I, I felt her kiss me, then I felt... Ah! Here, hold it, hold it. Now let me look at your throat. It's a, it's a puncture there, Steel, a puncture. Mm. I'd have died if I had not awakened. I woke up in time. I felt her there. I, I brushed her away. I heard her laugh at me. Steel, she must be destroyed. Shut up. There's two ways only steel to destroy her. Kind. The silver bullet or the sharpened wooden stick. Shut up, you idiot. My throat. Oh, my throat. She was killing me. I would have died if I had not wakened when I did. <laughs> you, you hear her? Come on, stand up. Yes, yes, help me. I, I feel sick. I ought to slug you for that bullet. Oh, forgive me. I, I was drunk. I was not myself. Come on. The path's over there. Now either go home and sleep or go back to town. To town, of course. But what are you going to do? Never mind me. Go on. You get out of here. There were tiny marks on Brocken's throat. There were traces of blood. In a country like Borneo, that was all the proof necessary. It was one thing for a few natives upriver to accuse Rajrani of being a vampire. But if a European walked into town with the kind of evidence Brocken could show, Rajrani's goose was cooked. They'd hunt her down and make sure she was dead. And somehow, I couldn't quite go along with the vampire theory. I don't know what I expected to accomplish, but after Brocken had left me, I lay down in the same place where he'd been lying. The grass was wet. The bugs started crawling over me. But I waited, quite sure that Rajrani was watching me. <sighs> so that's it. <laughs> Rajrani, 
Come here. Yes? Look, you're in serious trouble. Do you know that? Trouble? Will you trust me? Yes. Give me your hand. Let's get away from here. Yes. There are some islands off the coast. I have a lot of friends on one of them. I'm going to take you there. You'll be safe there. Safe? You don't even know what it's all about, do you? <laughs> here now, we'll have to get down to the beach without being seen. If we're lucky, we may be able to borrow a boat. <laughs> See? Across there? Out to sea? Yes. That strip of land, that's an island. We've got to get over there. Many boats on sand. We take one? Uh huh. Problem is to find one with oars in it. Boats with sail? Good, I'll settle for that. No! Yeah, catamaran, even better. Come on. Help me push it into the water. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay, now. Hurry, climb aboard. Steel! Stop them! Stop them! Come on. Come back, Steel! Bring that girl back there, you fool! They're going to find her! We'll get rid of her! Bring her back, Steel! Are we all over fire? Keep well down. They may start shooting. I'll have the sail up in a jiffy and we'll be on our way. Don't tell me, Steel! Bring that damn fire back! <laughs> There was an offshore breeze. It filled the big sail of the catamaran, and we glided away from the beach towards the island. I saw Bracken and half a dozen town toughs running towards the beach. They fired a few shots. The catamaran was hit in several places, but she kept afloat. We reached the island in about an hour and a half, and I took Rajrani to a friend of mine, a resident missionary and his wife. I told them about Rajrani, and that was all there was to it. They took her in. Friends, you've just heard Vampire. The answer was simple. Superstition and a readiness to believe in any kind of voodoo. In each case, the men who had died had been drinking to fight their fear of the vampire. And once drunk, they had driven themselves to go where they thought Raj Rani would be waiting. Maybe she always was, as when Vrocken went to her. And once there, their senses left them. Sure, they were killed, but death was the result of self-hypnosis plus something else. Something did puncture their throats. Something punctured the skin of my throat as I lay where Vrocken had been lying in the grass. A particularly vicious species of tick. And I brushed it off, but real fast. And so much for the vampire. Be around next week for a story I like to call Skid Row. Maybe you think it's Bleecker Street, New York City, east of 6th Avenue, or in San Francisco. At any rate, it's the longest street in the world. It's anywhere you go from Skipper Street in Antwerp to Wallamaroo, Sydney, Australia. From the Limehouse Causeway in London to Gore Street, Calcutta. It was back some years ago when I first ran into a guy named Sailor Jones. I'd seen him before that and I saw him afterwards. But it was in 1948 in Calcutta where my association with him began and his strange story unfolded. Heard with me on this transcribed John Steele adventure were Wendell Holmes and Inga Adams. I'm Don Douglas. So until next week then, and Skid Row, remember, adventure is where you find it. But don't look for it. It may find you. Remember to be with us next week for another episode in the series John Steele, Adventurer. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.